the Margie and Lisa Show. I'm Margie Wig, and this is my co-host. Lisa Jackson, we're glad to have you with us tonight. And we're very happy to have Amy Ritterbush with us tonight as our guest for the first two segments. We're going to talk first about the town meeting and what's on the warrant. And um, Amy is one of the organizers uh, of EHOP, mm -hmm. so she puts out great information about what's happening in Hopkinton um, politically, basically, or informational. Uh, in town government in general. In town government in general. It's, it's a great website. I mean, I was fishing around on that to get some information about our show, and it's really well done. And she's Thank also you. on the planning board. So it's a, I'm so grateful that you're here. You're mm -hmm. going to be a, a fount of, of information. <laughs> I hope. Anyway. So, because I haven't honestly haven't seen anything about what's on the warrant. Okay. Um, so, so there a, is a draft warrant available on the town. It was in the okay. select, selectman's packet last week. Okay. It's, but oh, um, cool. they might still remove things from it, or you can't. I don't think they can add anything to it at this point. Mm -hmm. But what would be the highlights, or I guess that would affect most? Yeah. I was just digging through it today. Um, let's see. So the budget, I think, has been the big topic everyone's been talking sure. about. That they finally voted on a recommended budget. Mm -hmm which is going to be a, around a 5% incre net increase for the average household. So the average size um, home, $486 increase. Um, that's pretty, yeah. For year. some people, that's pretty high. Yeah. And if your house is a lower value, it would be less, and a higher value would be of more. Course, so. yeah. Right, yeah. proportional 5%. So, um, and I think there was, uh, the, the board of, I've seen two board of selectmen meetings, and the discussion that was going around was um, that people are not, able to stay in town um, you know it seems like maybe what's happening with the population is that older people or fixed income people are and who's moving in are younger families and that's why there's the huge increase in the schools because sure. not only legacy farms right. but also the turnover people, well the baby yeah. boomers too I mean there's also a shift in that population that can't stay at home anymore I mean there's a, we had quite a few even you know in our neighborhood that people uh, that baby booming age, um, from a medical standpoint, we're mm -hmm. starting to see it where they, they just can't be at home anymore. Wanted to be on a single level. Yeah, or right. Yeah. So that that's also a change that's happening as yeah, well. And I think that is the fear. You don't want to make the taxes too high that people can't stay when they want to stay. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I know that the town has a tax abatement um, program where people can work off some of their taxes and things like that. But I don't yeah. know if it really takes a chunk off of. You know the seven eight thousand dollars a year, I and mean, that's yeah. a little hard to work. And you off. have to be able to. I mean, I know um, you have. There's a system that yeah. you have to apply yeah. for anything like that. Um, reduce school lunches, yeah. mass health, yeah. any abatement. You have to go through an uh, application process. Of course, right. and, and there is a tax relief committee, but I don't think they have huge amounts of funds to give out. People do apply um, for it, right? But um, it's funded. That one is funded by our donations, and since most oh. people just pay their bill online, they don't always think to send a little bit extra for the tax relief. I wonder if that'd so be how would something they? How would they do yeah. that? Is you there? Can do it on, you can do it online, or you could send a check to town hall. Oh, I wonder if the the website, because I pay mine through the website, if there would be a place if you could say, do you want to donate five dollars or ten dollars? I mean, I wonder if that's an easy enough thing for us, because I wouldn't. Would I would asking. think about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that might be a way to kind of help some of those folks that you know because I think it's good to keep our some of our founding fathers <laughs> you well, know that's, what I mean that's the worry know. is if yeah. if the I know I grew up in Newton and my parents bought in it was seventeen thousand dollars for their house yeah. right so then as the town grew and whatever else happened their taxes were really high mm -hmm. and they stayed there until 2011 but what I remember my mom saying that the taxes are high because a lot of it feeds into the schools. Right. But then, when when families no longer have school age children, right. yeah, you right. know they love being in their home. But but the taxes don't seem to be benefiting them as much right. as when they had younger kids. Yeah, right. there, was, uh, there are some other programs too. Like there's a mean tested. Um, tax exemption for seniors too. I'm not sure what the requirements of each one are and how hard they are to get. Mm -hmm. I think we voted about it at town meeting last year. Well, the other thing is w the, the definition of senior varies. Right. right. I saw one thing, I forget where it was, but if you were 55, you, you could get, you know, be a right. senior. Okay. I know 50 is the age for the AARP yeah. magazine, which cracks and me up. And then 67 <laughs> and, is for Social Security. Right, and, and 62 yeah. I've seen in some places for a senior discount or 65. So 
I, I'm not sure Where seniors know matters. when they are a senior for certain programs. Yeah, right. I think it really could use better publicity all around, yeah, but all of the different options for people. Yeah. Well, and I also, not to mention, but families. I mean, working families that work in CVS at the gas station, at the post office, and things like that. I mean, I think... Schools. Yeah, school. <laughs> schools, exactly. I mean, those yeah. folks that, you know, are on a... I mean, you guys are on a fixed income. You're, you're I mean, I was looking at, you know, to, you know, what they're adding to your salary, and it's not necessarily comparable it's, for it's the not work. Mine. It's not yeah. mine. It's teachers. Yeah. So it, besides <laughs> budget, I was really watching on oh, yeah. Facebook. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Thank you. Um, so what do, what do we have? Do they, are there? For the capital articles? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I, got, I printed out the list here. So let's see. So the downtown corridor project is a big one. Okay. And that mm -hmm. looks in the spreadsheet that was online, they were requesting three yep. three million for yeah. that. Can I um, interject? Yep. I saw something in here that just came out in the paper mm -hmm. um, that the the downtown quarter project um, selected so yeah. the main street quarter project. So there were some changes reestablishing Marathon Way adjacent to the common. Um, and removing three previously proposed. So there have been some, st I'm looking at five, uh, several adjustments mm -hmm. to what, what was proposed. Um, yeah, based on feedback that they got. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did so it bring the price up or down? I don't know. I don't think yeah. I ever heard a final number before. And I don't know if this is final. This is what's right. in the spreadsheet yeah. of capital requests. And I, does it say in there if the undergrounding is in there or not? It, uh, I don't see anything about the undergrounding. I, it says, reestablished Marathon Way, as, as I said, yep. removed westbound through lane on Main Street at Grove and Cedar, added southbound right turn lane from Cedar onto Main westbound, provided two-way separated bike path on the southerly side of Main east of Cedar to Hayden Row, which I think is terrible, personally, eliminated the separated path on the north side, so they're going to have... No, well, before it had been, it was on one side, then you had to cross on the other side. I think having it all on one side That's is true. better. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, general comments received regarding on street parking reductions. Oh, no, that's something else. Um, added 17 on street parking spaces just west of the signal intersection of Cedar, Maine to Ash. So that's good. C Cedar, Maine. Just west of the signalized intersection from of Cedar Street slash Main Street. That's 85. To Ash Street. Hmm. So that, where would that be? That would be on the other side by the library? That sounds like they mean to, that it's going east. Yeah, I mean, it would be, yeah, <laughs> so, Ash Street would be back towards that Center School. That may not be right. Well, Center yeah. Street, Main yeah. Street is the gas right. station, yeah. CVS, to Ash Street. Yeah. So just from just west. Just west of Ash? Of that. It's not clear. That's not clear. Okay. No. Um, and then comments received from Upper Charles Rail Trail and other bike paths. On the option of separate one-way separated bike lanes versus two-way separated, that's what I think. There's one way one side of the street, one way the other side. Mm. It seems to make more sense to me. So I guess someone else said something. Parking, Mass DOT on improving left lane turns. Comment. Nope, it doesn't say anything about um, undergrounding. Hmm. Yep. I mean, three million in the whole scheme of things is. I mean, to do underground. I mean, I would think that would bump that price yeah, up I, because I think three million is kind of low for I that. Agree. And honestly, better, I, must, think must that, yeah. I think the undergrounding is just visual. Yeah. I don't think mm -hmm. it adds anything in terms of right. accessibility to stores or right. increasing business. I think it's just it's more beautiful, clearly. Right. Yeah. But we need more three million flow of more beauty when we already renovated the library and we're already right. putting in Marathon School. For the cost, though, I would definitely right. want. Oh, to yeah, do it. I think yeah, it's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. It's just three million dollars. I mean, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So there's a water main on Hayden Row for a million six. Um, so that, that needs, needs to happening. be replaced. That's not I, yeah. right. Yeah. I don't yeah, think that's old. optional. And right. usually water projects are funded by the water and sewer fund, so only people that you have water have to right. pay. So that okay, that makes sense. Uh, sidewalk five-year sidewalk plan a continuation. Sounds like that's one point seven million. Mm -hmm. so, and so. so you know this but when they started that sidewalk plan it seems like the priority is given to the center of town mm -hmm. and all the sidewalks you know coming off of the common mm -hmm. basically um, but then there was a sidewalk that came toward 
um, Clinton and Clinton and that. Yeah. And so it came partway mm-hmm. across the street in front of Gracious Retirement Living. Yeah. And then it sort of ended at Clinton. Yep. Um, I don't know if they're going to continue to the town line in that direction. Right. Oh. I know they were talking about going all the way to Price Chopper, I thought. Yeah, they were. And the other... Had but that's, left. they talked about that being really tricky. Because it is going, tricky. Because Tim talked about that because going under the highway. It is. So yeah, I'm, so that's a little tricky, So I'm wondering too. if they're extending... Maybe yeah, the on, length of Maine, on Cedar Street. We don't know. I mean, maybe down Cedar Street towards the state park because there's no sidewalks there. That, yeah, and I know there was be... one thing um, that the Upper Charles Rail Trail people, mm-hmm. and when they came to Youth Commission, when I was to Youth Commission were talking about walkability for youth mm-hmm. right. to get from center of town to state park, for yeah, example. Right. And then the cross country runners run a lot you right. know on the yeah. sidewalks right and they we don't do want the them running trail. the street they do right. but that's center. only one mile mm-hmm. right so, so if they could run miles. down to state park that would be great yeah, yeah. Be great. but, but that would make details. sense because there's hardly there's only a tiny bit of sidewalk there really to the post office right and, mm-hmm. you know because i've even looked at that when i was really interested in walkability of the town because that so i haven't fully delved into it yet but on the town website if you click on town meeting there's a whole google folder of all different information about all different projects and Excellent. this is just a summary what, how the warrants are written yeah, yeah but there's, there's like a folder for dpw and a folder for schools mm-hmm. and so you could open up and there probably is there probably are details about the right. sidewalk yeah. plan yeah. Oh, i don't okay. know what they are right now yeah we'll have to take a look at that but, that's but good it looks for like it's people under to know that they yeah. can dpw budget though is it under dpw sidewalks is under dpw yeah, yeah. so yeah. that would come out of their budget or is it an addition it's to an their addition budget? it looks like it's, it would be bonded oh so. okay gotcha so we'll have to vote on it mm-hmm. um Turf so field is on there. Uh, and does the turf field include the bus parking um, proposal? Mm-hmm. Let's see, that's a separate one. Because that, I know that's part of that whole. And they thought. also mm-hmm. talked about increasing the athletic fees. I saw that from because 110 of the to turf 200. Fields. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to yeah. kind of, and we're the lowest. I mean, the next you know, town up we should was ask. Bellingham was two hundred dollars for okay. athletic fees. So two hundred sounds like a reasonable. Yeah, it's, it is. Uh, so there's something called Stage One Campus Road Master Plan for three hundred and twenty. So I'm wondering if that includes the bus parking lot. It must, yeah. yeah. So it's called Campus think. Road. We always call it Loop Road. Right. Campus Road. Right. Campus Road. Right. right. Okay. So. Yeah, it doesn't, I'm not <laughs> sure, but I'm guessing that that's, we, yeah. we should clarify. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's 320,000. Uh, Some other big ones here. Oh, Hopkinton, oh, CPC funding. There's a 1.7 million for the Hopkinton Athletic Field comp- yeah. Complex Phase 1. And that's coming from Community Preservation yeah. Fund, so mm-hmm. that's... That's, that's already a yeah. done deal. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. Fruit I mean, Street that's... Lighting for 650,000. I want to know about that. But that's yeah. CPC. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When there's some election equipment somewhere, I don't. That's um, from the town clerk. I yeah, think. we need. New, I would imagine we need. You yeah, voting, voting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, voting machines and. Yeah. Oh, it's not even that expensive. So yeah, election precinct not. tabulator update twenty eight thousand. I mean, there's only three of them, right? I mean, because there's yeah, yeah for each for, precinct for mm, or five, five, maybe five, because yeah. we have five point seats. Yeah. 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 So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, so in the so in the warrants, mm-hmm. what are the um. Those are, that's, those are the warrants? These are the capital articles. Okay. Um, then there's the zoning bylaws and stuff, too. So. Okay. okay. So what, anything stand those. out to you? Because that's planning board. I'm sure yeah. you see. <laughs> so I think so you said you might have Denise on some other time, too. Yeah, there's she's going to be on uh, next week. We're going to have Denise to talk about um, the marijuana retail expense. marijuana in town. Yeah. yeah. So there's a couple different articles on that. A uh, general bylaw, which I think requires just a 50% uh, majority vote, and then mm-hmm. there's a zoning bylaw, which would require a two two-thirds. Thirds, yeah. yeah. Okay. So good to know. So two thirds is a much higher bar. And the and board of selectmen meeting tomorrow night would again discuss this and would would give a um, is it tomorrow night or next week? So the board of selectmen already voted in favor oh, sorry, in favor Wednesday. of banning the, no, the right. marijuana establishment. Oh okay. The and then the, wasn't it the planning board? Planning board was split. We had a split vote. Yeah, uh-huh. they half had of a us, split half vote. Half of us were in favor, half of us were not. Right. Mm-hmm. And so. so ultimately, who who decides that? Is it a town, oh, town meeting? Town, town meeting. meeting. Oh, okay. Do it. Yeah, town meeting will do that. That's good. And it's really to not allow dispensaries mm-hmm. is what I read from the article. No, dispensaries is the medical, and so those are right. already it's allowed. The right, the medical, recreational. but the recreational. This is the recreational we'll talk yeah. about. Well, That's written, what I meant. Yeah. It's written very broadly. It would prohibit cultivation, testing facilities, right. manufacturing, retail, any other type of recreational marijuana yeah. establishment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there was, I know that, that on uh, Fruit Street, there was someone growing a lot of marijuana in their backyard. Mm. That um, 
and they were renting a house um, and then somehow people yeah. found out that something was happening over there I knew and they got was. arrested yeah I know who oh. owned it but I, um, yeah I know who owns so, it uh, <laughs> the house it was a yeah, surprise so, I was trying so, to find the zoning section here <laughs> so, oh is it for the yeah okay so, okay so we have um, a couple minor pl um, what do you call it? housekeeping articles like um, special permit duration how long that can that can be um, let's see the process on yeah that. it's just so if state. anyone wants a special permit, how long it would last right. yeah so, so that's, that's a one that that's a set amount I would think that would have no to I be think it's an up to like adjustable the, oh yeah, up to so, yeah. yeah okay yeah, so I'm sorry, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> to no read you're up. Fine. It was just cha state law changed, so we're changing ours to comply with state law. So. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. And then the fines for zoning violations are going to increase. They don't have to increase, but we'd be allowed to increase them yeah. more per state law. Mm -hmm. So the hotel overlay district, um, we're recommending yeah, that, that be changed so. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, some parts increased, some, ex um, decreased. some decreased. Yeah. Yep. The maximum building height in the zone industrial districts. Um, they just wanted to do that more uniformly. That's a good idea. Is yeah. it, so it's random now? No, it used to say, I think, Three. shall not exceed four right. stories. Oh, and they wow. thought it would be better to say shall not exceed 60 feet. Exactly. That's oh. smart. Yeah, so because smart. you could have three stories at 60 feet. You could have five. I don't know if you can really have five stories. Well, yeah, feet. it depends on each story, how the height of it well, is. Well, right. I have to say, I went into um, the apartments at Modera. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the ceiling height in, is in there, but I felt very small. Hmm. I, it's got to be it's not an eight foot ceiling that's right. got to be a 10 or a 12 foot right. ceiling so if you have four stories and they're yeah. 12 feet mm -hmm. you know level so you reach that 60 right. feet yeah. then you would you're right because i've been in mm, there too yeah. yeah so but that i mean that makes so sense to do from story so, to yeah. feet yeah that's smart so mike yeah. wants to know when does town meeting start and how long will it last oh well <laughs> yeah. so we know when it starts starts may so, 7th starts may 7th yeah. at seven o'clock at the middle school mm -hmm. in recent memory it's always lasted at least two nights yeah i know <laughs> and i've been to it last i've been to town well, meetings at last like four nights three, sometimes four. and yeah. do we have controversial in your opinion do we have the big controversial issues this year that we've well, had in the past the budget is certainly going to be controversial yeah because um, that's a, a significant increase i think the turf fields might be controversial on mm -hmm. the downtown corridor um and mm -hmm. i think the marijuana establishments too we'll have mm -hmm. a lot of discussion on that too yeah so it's hard to know, but we always have some controversial every right, year. Right, of course. Well, it's a decision it's and it's a, a discussion. Grand. Yeah. So. Well, it's, I, I love town meeting, honestly, because it's very granular. Yeah. Like, it makes me feel like it's real government at work, boots on the ground government. And, I mean, I haven't been to town meeting in a few years, but when I've been there, even though it's painful at times, I think it's a very good yeah. opportunity for you to hear kind of the nitty-gritty of what's going mm -hmm. on in town. It can go off. Filter. And any registered Very voter can come. Yeah. I remember when Milford, they were thinking of how they might have a casino, that somebody proposed a casino in yeah. Milford. Mm. Milford has representative town meetings, so those people who were opposed to it, they yeah. couldn't even go vote at their town right. meeting. They had to hope that the person they elected from their neighborhood right, would represent would feel the way they, they No, did. and we're lucky we have open town meeting because yeah. it's very important I mean and if you have a issue that's when you have time when right. you have a platform to bring up your issue and that's probably which you know we should recommend to the public that right. if they find a town warrant that they disagree with or they have an opinion on that's that's the time that's why you have town meeting yeah you right know? and there are certain rules that the moderator the has moderator to, can, yeah. you know moderator has a certain time mm -hmm. limit for each person to speak yep. Yep. and and you have to go through the moderator to talk to someone else right not a back and forth and you can, right <laughs> yep. not a back and forth so it's um it, it's definitely a procedure yep. but yes and you know people who have something they want to say or they have a particular issue they it's feel strongly a about and then should an go mm -hmm. yeah right uh, just to make sure that their voice gets heard i mean that's what america is all about is right. being able to be heard freedom of speech yeah. well and i'm sure people will be there to advocate right you know Both for ways, the yeah. the recreational marijuana and yeah mm -hmm. and vote yeah you, mean, you have to be there to vote right right, right. and so. that's what affects and i mean the highest town meeting well, maybe we had 1400 people Mm. I think it's like I looked that up. I was curious, and we have what sixteen thousand in yeah. the town, so it's not 
very well attended. Granted, the middle school can only handle yeah. so much. Yeah. If everybody came, we wouldn't be able yeah. to get them. <laughs> right. Well, with the so, Western but they can watch it. They yeah. can watch it, and then they can go down if there's something yes, coming right. that they really want Absolutely. to talk about. Yeah. So we we're actually out of time for oh, this yeah. first okay. segment. <laughs> I know time flies when you're having yeah. fun, and you're surprised that we're already done. Yeah. Um, right. Is there anything else that you wanted to add about the town meeting warrants? Yeah. Um, I would just say to EHOP's going to be sending out some more information soon, so look for that because um, we're going to kind of dive into it tomorrow at our meeting. And can people access EHOP if they don't? Yeah. yeah. So you can oh, go to EHOP.org or, EHOP or, face, or Facebook, yep. just Facebook EHOP. Um, Oh, 1748 and, and as it, you suggested on the uh, checking the town meeting warrant they just go to the town website and there would be something on the town website yeah. well the warrant is not final yet oh, there was just a draft, the draft. in the selectman's the packet so it's a little hard to find on the i think the budget is yeah there the now. budget's on yeah. there because i yeah. was taking a peek at the budget and it had yeah. the details of the different okay. departments but i would remind people to register to vote if they're not by um april 12th and they both. do that at um 80 south street with do it and the town clerk you or can online do it on your yeah. cool super easy thank you um the women's club is having a meet the candidates night April 25th yep. and, okay. then, and then EHOP is having the Know Your Vote on April 30th. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we'll be back in a couple minutes to talk about the Facebook Land data breach and what do we do? This week on uh, Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Poets, storytellers, and musicians perform and share their original works. Recycling the radiant of a wooden floor. The closed windows shuts out the air and noise from the street below. Sunlight seeps through glass and grill work, glowing like lacquer on their backs. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Welcome back. So in this segment, we are going to talk about what happened with the Facebook breach with Cambridge um, Analytica. Analytica and we are also fortunate that Amy Bridabush is the webmaster for Wellesley Public Schools so she mm. is very tech savvy um, so when we were thinking about doing the town meeting um, piece we also said hey yeah. could you give us some advice yeah. Sure. Yeah. yep so I, I'll give a little background I'm yeah. sure people know but um, just from Wall Street Journal and actually today I heard that it was 800 850 million users yep. hacked is what I heard today. Uh -huh. um, and then the, the data policies were, 2011 there was a settlement, FTC, uh, Federal Trade Commission investigated whether they violated terms of the 2011 settlement when data of up to 50 million users was transferred to an analytic, right. analytics yeah. firm um, tied to Donald Trump. Well, we should talk about what hacked means too because like when we put up Facebook you know, we put up information, it would be hard for someone to go through each Facebook page and learn that information, why it's so scary, or, you know, Facebook shared that information with Cambridge Analytica in a spreadsheet format. Those of us that do statistics, we don't want to try to go from page to page, we'd never be able to find that information. That's why right. it's, why it's been, right. I mean, that's why I think it's significant. I think that's why it's such a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, well, the thing is, I think, uh, um, well, here, Cambridge Analytica, Analytica is a data analysis firm that is suddenly all over the news, mm -hmm. worked for a number of political clients, including the Trump campaign, Bannon, yeah. obtained data from the makers of one of these apps and improperly kept the data for years, yeah. despite telling social network the records were destroyed. Facebook never checked back right. mm -hmm. to, to verify that. Um, three years ago, they changed, Facebook changed the product so developers can't access information of people's friends, but they're still 
you know, accessing the, the all that data that they pick up from whatever game you play mm -hmm. and whatever like you like. Facebook is having internal debates over how to handle revelations that Russians used the site to influence the 2016 presidential election. Um, company Facebook is unable to anticipate the ways the platform and the incredible power trove, powerful trove of sensitive data can be misused. 2007, uh, Facebook's beacon advertising system shared shopping behavior um, with friends and family. So that was some, some of them were their life choices and, and they weren't ready to disclose some of those things. Um, mm -hmm. And then the second recurring problem is um, company has a powerful, often negative effect on our psychology, um, <laughs> encourages people to passively consume friends' posts, but that can make them unhappy. And something that I heard um, recently, which I wasn't aware of, is that mm -hmm. Mark Zuckerberg's major undergrad was psychology. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's not a business guy. Right. So what he's what he's or interested technology in? Guy? I would have guessed no, he was he's a not a science. technology guy. That's <laughs> what's so interesting. He is a psych guy. Right. So he invented this thing right. where the like and the Which friend. Which is very addictive. Right. And, exactly, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. and friend and game and words with friends. Right. You know, all of that mm -hmm. hooks people, right. and then they don't realize that when you get one of those fun tests that says which. Yeah flower are you like right. you know you're, you're, you're giving them data. information yeah. or, or when you're you know you, all guess, of it how is very that, subtle right how is that information used so you have to think right. about it I don't care too much about how that comes out I mean if they may post an ad that looks put me on a feed that looks like that may appeal to what I think. yeah exactly so I think that's why it, it seems invasive but right. to me I I view Facebook as something that it's up there, people see it, mm -hmm. you know, that that's what's on there. And recently my daughter's like, please don't post pictures of me on Facebook. I'm right. like, that's okay. Right. Yeah. You know, because and my she, sister doesn't want yeah. that either. Hmm. Right. And you don't know how that's being used. Right. That's that's right. the problem is we innocently think right. This is oh hey look at this yeah, picture of what we Margie's did. Yeah, gonna see me look what ride we did. my horse. Yeah. But then yeah. <laughs> whatever I I think that's less right nefarious right. than what they're doing with the data right. right you know so they're collecting the data they you know they put up the whatever fake news they did you yeah. know to influence the Russians influenced our opinions about certain candidates right. and then whatever like we hit goes on to a spreadsheet of okay mm -hmm. these people liked this anti candidate right. category and then what happens with that? I know that I also got alarmed. Oh, by the way, Andy and Nanda gave us likes on Facebook. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Um, I also was alarmed to hear something about um, Donald Trump wanting to know what the voting registration, what the votes were. Right. Hmm. He wanted to see all the voting right. documentation the yeah. because they yeah. were looking oh. for um, fake votes or, or okay. illegal voters. Right. But it's we we can't let... A right. presidential candidate or any candidate see right. who voted for them. Oh, right. right. Yeah. And that's well, what he wanted about to do. Exactly. No. So, but Facebook, on um, kind of a devil's advocate thing, yeah. I mean, it's you keep it up there. And I think what happens, so I speak to college students all the time, mm -hmm. and I ask them, where do you get your news about disasters or whatever? Yeah. And they say, well, either their parents or Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I think well, Facebook there's also is Instagram, a, right, and Snapchat, Twitter, and all Twitter, all that. Huge. but I think social media has right. become more yeah. of a source of mm -hmm. what people think are credible information mm -hmm. than than really mm -hmm. traditional all, news sources. And all your credible news sources are on Facebook too. Right. So if you follow and right. well, CNN, so you can, it'll, yeah, it'll it, come up in your feed, of course. And then it's there when you're seeing all your friend stuff too. So and, and I so. think you know, as adults, we need to think about. I mean, sure, our data was breached. Everybody needs to pay attention and take responsibility for what they're sharing. Mm -hmm. You know, like a, you're not going to write something in the newspaper that's inflammatory, so maybe you don't write something on Facebook that's right. inflammatory that you don't want to come back to, and or if, if you, you don't want to share opinion. And even if you're just sharing it with your friends, right. anybody could screenshot it and send it to of someone course. else, so you have to know. Yeah, yeah. that's the, th it's just, it's. Well, that was in some privacy fed settings that I looked up that I thought was interesting on, um, so it says you can pick what friends see what. Mm -hmm. um, you can customize the settings and the link in your box. So there's there's a bunch of ways. There was like a 10-step process that had ways to 
for me, honestly, I didn't care about a lot of it. I'm like, my Facebook stuff's out there. You know, if people want to see it, that's fine. Yeah, and I limit what I post. Right. Know, and I think right. that I wouldn't mind if, if it did actually get right. better. Right, and that's <laughs> what you think about. But, I mean, there are ways if, you know, if you don't want certain opinions, maybe a family member is a Trump supporter and you're a very strong Democrat, maybe you don't want to you know shake the trees a little bit mm -hmm. maybe you don't want that family member to see that post then you can there's actually settings within this facebook that yeah. can, can but that's that's less i think the posting of your personal you know here's my picture is less problematic than shopping the trends other thing yeah shopping trends and yeah. likes and all of that yeah. um and i know um when this happened I went to something and Googled how do I fix my yeah. settings, yeah. and then and then it told you very specifically yeah. go to any page. Yeah. There's a place where you can adjust your settings. Yeah. Then you go through, and I just had everything private, you know, just to my friends or only me. Right. Um, I just want to say Andy wants to know from Amy what are some of the most common examples of oversharing that could put users' <laughs> privacy at risk that you see in your line of work. Right, oh. especially with students. So with your... So, let's see, I can't talk about No, not specifically. students. Right. No. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Well, uh, I obviously... Suggestive. Sending, yeah. Oh, sure, of course. You know, suggestive right. photos. Don't or, send a right. photo don't that think you don't just, want people to see in 30 years when you're right. running for president. Right, and don't one. think just because you're Snapchatting it to one person yep, right. it gets that shared. they won't well, even screenshot it or something. Too. I mean, the, yeah, yeah. they can copy and paste that picture. Yep. And, yeah. You know, so I, photographs, obviously. Right, yeah. Um, and angry posts. I mean, I see some angry posts. A lot posts. of people post before they think. There's yeah, need to stop and, and think about what you say. you know, like not always the greatest way to handle things either you know i mean you can make a statement but i think going after one person or so targeting th bullying so that's yeah. that um that asian a thousand chariots cannot overtake the spoken word right. or the text right. or the tweet or the tweet if it's yeah. out there it's out the there message, yeah. Yeah. That is right true. Yeah. yeah what was his question he just wanted to know if there's anything that um in terms of your job yeah. are there things that you would be you know you would teachers would would be cautioned not to share principals would caution teachers don't put this up i know we yeah. have so we do forms. we have a social media policy as one of the school yeah. committee policies in wellesley yeah. and yeah. um so if you're going to use twitter for school but you can you, ha you should have a separate account that is specifically your school twitter account yeah. mm -hmm. and the same thing for um for Facebook, we have a Facebook business account for the school district, mm -hmm. and that way, and, I, and I'm, I'm one of the administrators profiles. for that, and we oh, can nice. and we can add people to that with their work email, mm -hmm. and then they can join it. Then they they join the Facebook business account with their work email. We never see each other's private posts or anything. That we're yeah. just a part of this business account that manages it in all the school accounts and everything. And so it keeps it all separate. You have yeah. to keep Which it all really separate. Smart. Right. We have one more question that says, "Can you hire companies to clean up?" Your social media? No, I don't know. That's interesting. But I, 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 I think honestly, you can. I would assume so. Yeah. Just hire but, the but, college but kid I next think <laughs> From what you found and from yeah. what I read, yeah. it didn't seem that difficult no. to go on mm -hmm. to there the There were like ten page. steps that walked yeah, you through and, all your privacy right. settings. Mm -hmm. Online. So do you have advice on the, on cleaning up privacy settings from yeah. Facebook? I don't know. I think I would do it myself personally. Yeah, exactly. Personally. Yeah. So yeah. do you know what, what but uh, how would someone do it? Can you tell us offhand? Or? Well, the, um, the app the things is, is, yeah. is the most serious. This yeah. recent breach was that people had um, agreed to allow this app access to the Facebook account, and it gave, it, it gave them a very broad app access to the Facebook mm -hmm. account. Now, I think after 2014, Facebook made a change, and every time you add an app, it tells you exactly what that app will have access to. Mm -hmm. yep. And to me, if it just has my name, my profile picture, which is public anyway, yeah. and maybe my email, I, I don't right. mind that at all. But when it starts to ask for more or to be able to post on my behalf, then right. I right. either and don't add it or I uncheck right. that box. And I'm when always I, alarmed when it says you're allowing cookies right. because allowing mm -hmm. cookies means that it's sharing your right. a cookie isn't a fun thing well, it means it's it taking your information, information and yeah. sending it somewhere else or allowing but it is useful because to, when you come back useful. to the site it remembers you and it, right. it's like a convenience factor like that that's you know. and that i think that's what bites us yeah. is the convenience sure. and we're not thinking about what might what else might happen 
And this is the whole thing with um, Facebook in general. A lot of people, there's that delete Facebook movement, but yeah. what, like people love it too, yeah, though. I love it's, it. it's a good communication yeah. tool. And there's nothing really that replaces it. Like right. even Instagram yeah, and it's Snapchat. Not the same. And, it's not yeah, the Instagram same. and WhatsApp are all owned by Facebook. Like, right. So oh. you're not. Oh, yeah. Well, also, <laughs> not only to, yeah. I mean, I know we're kind of talking about Facebook, but I mean, grocery stores, CVS. Yep. This I is, mean, there, there's all kinds of data that someone mentioned. This is what that, just came up. Yeah. It says retailers also yeah. need, seem to know what I'm buying. Yeah. Because places like Stop and Shop and CVS seem to give me coupons based on what yeah. I buy. It's sometimes useful, but I know lots of people are scared by that thought. And I have a friend who like visited <laughs> somewhere. <more. laughs> mm -hmm. I forget where they visited. And something came up yeah. mm -hmm. offering them something. Yep. in that area and they hadn't oh. done anything. So you have to shut off it your location services. Right. So you have to services. shut off your location right. services. So what do you yeah, have yeah, it's your... very useful to have location yeah. services because it tells you the weather right. from where you are. <laughs> so I mean just some really basic rules. So decide how private you want your profile mm -hmm. to be. So I think that you know that's a personal decision. You and all three of us would do something very different. And then uncheck the let friends of people tagged in my friends photos. of friends yeah mm -hmm. so yeah. so one thing we that's don't know interesting, who those people are like celia yeah. when other people picture like celia's dad picture puts up a picture celia facebook the facial recognition they know yeah, yeah. Oh, no but no because like it looks like she me. looks like you facial yeah. recognition so it, it's software. so funny so i think that's very interesting so i always laugh about that i'm like oh you poor kid you know yeah and then it says um you can go into clink uh, click in to customize settings under the box you just set. So mm -hmm. you see, let the friends of tag, you know, friends of people mm -hmm. comment. Because I'll post something and I get a bunch of these random comments slamming me, and I'm like, I, they're not my friend. Why is that? And that was a privacy setting I oh, had yeah, to no. change I don't, when I put up comments. I don't do so when you put up a political thing and then someone all of a sudden yeah. puts something really surly and on there. And we have a comment that says, I hate when I buy something on Amazon yeah. and the next time I sign into Facebook, yeah, that's right. I'm seeing ads, the ads for what I just it. bought. Yeah. So it seems like it, it's, it's a little very bit. It's integrated. And, and even Alexa, we don't know where that information goes. But that comes from Google, I think. Yes, I, think I think that's your search does. engine. It's all collecting so, data so, all the time. You know, and then you can say hide I do this all the time hide certain people or networks from seeing your information mm -hmm. so that's something you don't want shared or I more hide their posts like some posts right. like mm -hmm. I, I do that just, too. you know and that's yeah. just a really and that's a right click on yeah. that yeah. Some people that have friended me that I don't really know all that well and I, do, I do keep a same. separate group about like and that's I don't not want the them same. to see so what you're doing is you're just I'm, what we're right. talking about is how do we keep our data safe well, so hiding a, a post isn't the same as no and I think there's protecting data well I think it would be one it's thing more what is you don't not want allow to... cookies on Google. Yeah. I mean, so then you don't get the convenience of your passwords. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's one way. And please jump in. If oh, you and think the location. Yeah, like the location services. Like when you're searching for yeah. Google. Yeah. When you're Steven searching. likes our show on FB. Thanks, Thanks Steven. Steven. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So when you. Um, what was I going to say? When Sorry. you search for something on Google, if you have the location enabled, it will show you shops with that yeah. name near you. Which well, is, and that's even really Waze useful. does that. Yeah. And, you know, and I have my location services off. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah. I yeah. know where I am. I don't. You know. Right. And if I need to, if I need to go to Google Maps, then I go to Google Maps, and then I put in my then you put in the where I'm starting, where I'm going. But I may be looking for a location or direction from. I may be in Framingham. Right. So I'm yeah. not going to necessarily be putting my home address. Right. Yeah. So, but I mean, I guess a lot of it's just be aware. You know right. what I mean? I think you have to, when you notice something like that, you're like, okay, Don't assume well, you're safe. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, don't talk to strangers. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, just really be conscious about what you're sharing and take responsibility for it, I mm -hmm. guess, is really kind of what it boils down to. Yeah. Yeah. And the app yeah. permissions. Be careful. You app know, go, permissions. Go check the settings for your apps. Yeah. yeah. Like and I also say, if, if you guys haven't done this, who are watching, I would go to um, Google how do I protect my data yeah. mm -hmm. on Facebook? And it does give you, uh, it walked me through it, yeah. Yeah. and I was able to it was go through a, everything. I found a 10 step process. Yeah. That yeah, mine was different than that, but it's yeah. all good. Whatever yeah. it is, mm -hmm. well, you know what's to out know there. What's out there? Like you yeah. buy a new computer, learn how to use a new computer, you buy a new phone, you, you know, I mm -hmm. think your apps apply yeah. the same way. Yep. So that's actually all we have for okay. that segment. And that segment, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be back, and we're going to talk more specifically about the school budget amount and what cuts we have heard of um, based on what and we've got pieces. information and, and newspaper articles. So okay. thank you thank so you. much, Amy. Thank, thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Right. See you back. Thank you. This week on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, poets, storytellers, and
musicians perform and share their original works. Recycling the radiant of a wooden floor. The closed windows shuts out the air and noise from the street below. Sunlight seeps through glass and grill work, glowing like lacquer on their backs. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Hi, and we're back to the Margie and Lisa show. I'm so happy you're joining us. Now we're going to talk about the school budget. So there's a lot of scuttlebutt over this because our, our budget in general is going to increase 5.92 percent and it seems like the schools are not a huge increase on that like when i was so looking at the budget i have a 5.8 percent increase so we don't really know what right. the, this is just a proposed yeah it's preliminary budget. Yeah. we're not sure what the increased amount is yet yep. it's just proposed yeah, and it was interesting. I was looking at the school budget. They talked about offsetting some of the costs. Um, you know, the, the initial presentation in November um, showed an 8.9 increase over last year. And out of the district costs were separated, it would be a 6.9 um, um, increase. So I think that movement is a little bit and they're talking about um, increasing those that have p kids in sports the athletic fee from 110 to 200 per student mm -hmm. and we're the lowest um, Be Bellingham is the next lowest at 200 so I think that's a reasonable yeah. increase um, and I remember when they increased it from the last amount right so and it was very thing, low call, things go up costs go up it should increase right and especially if that's we're putting in new turf and things yeah. like that so and parking and things like that and a new school. <laughs> so what do you have, Margie? Of um, I, so I saw on, uh, on the Board of Selectmen meeting, um, I, I watched the conversation. I saw Brian Herr um, asking questions about specifics, yep. and Norman Kamala really couldn't give specifics. Right. Um, Kathy McLeod really wasn't going to give specifics right, but did say okay, that yeah. they had to make some very difficult decisions yeah. and the thing that alarmed me um, and made me really pay attention and want to talk about this yeah. and I hope our viewers will call in or, or email us their yeah. thoughts and questions um, was she said some of the programs that have been in place for the past 26 years yeah. will not be able to continue. I saw that. So, yeah. so there are some things that we value right. you know and part of it is because of the increased enrollment right. that was unexpected. Right. You know, right. what we said earlier is some of the older people are choosing to go to, you know, retirement homes or, right. or retire in a different place, warmer or, or something, yep. and, and younger families are moving in, which you really couldn't predict. Right. And then Legacy Farms, yep. I think, was, the block. Yeah. was scheduled to have or proposed uh, projected to have a certain number of kids yeah, per unit and that. we've done differently than they projected right. so um, that that was where I said wait a second well it's interesting the highest increases showed um, 930,000 for special education which we all know is a costly but that was a that's a pretty high increase so where are these numbers from so this was EHOP and this was the budget so she had that's like, what's yeah, proposed yeah this well this was just kind of the summary of it and then the second highest was um, three hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the central office. So those. So are, this uh, okay. Is that an increased number? 
or total number? The highest increases. That's oh, okay. the way it's worded. All right. So we're not, yeah, so not a total number. I can't imagine that yeah. you'd be able to run special education for that amount. No, no, but I know. That's, that's, a, that's a, that's a, that's a significant an increase. increase. And they would need an increase in this because we do have increased, right. I see them well, in the schools. Well, student population is, mm -hmm. yeah, in language yeah. and things like that. So there's a lot of, yep. you know, increases. And, and what were the, I, I'm failing to remember what were the cuts that they were. Well, that's what I, I have here. Yeah. So um, in the Hopkinton Choir, Jonathan Phelps, who is an amazing, yeah. I'm so grateful for his news work. Yeah. I mean, he really does. He does very do, diligent. Does a doing. very good, um, I would say, unbiased, kind of complete, comprehensive I report agree. of what what's happening. Right. Um, so he talked about um, the, the Board of Selectmen meeting where Rebecca Abate, Yep. Um, uh, went in to present, she's president of the Hopkinton Teachers Association, mm -hmm. went in to um, spoke, speak against the plan that reduced the proposed school budget from 45.7 million okay. to 45 million. So that's a 2.7 million decrease. decrease. Yes. The town faces a challenging budget year with increased debt, debt <laughs> from three major building projects, library, public works, garage, and Marathon Elementary School. Those three huge projects happened at once. Right. The school committee is set to vote on the $45 million figure Thursday night, and that would have been last Thursday night because this was March, 40, March 30th. Yeah. No, no, that's Thursday. tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow is yep. the vote. Hopkinton is a town that's growing fast. Um, the growth has exceeded the projections by 54 students. Yeah. So that's and, two and, classrooms. and they'll exceed the projections yeah. next yeah. year as well, right? So I mean that's been the challenge. Um, the current budget, 42,591. Yeah. Um, million. Million, and then the request is. Forty-five thousand seven hundred million, and which is an increase of seven point three percent. That's what's being requested. Proposed, yeah. Town manager is in, is recommending a five point eight percent. Right. So the school committee has a different amount than the town right. manager by their office by two. What is that? Well, anyway, I don't want to do math right now. I know it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to do it on the yeah, camera. It's uh, the full budget. So it's like it's one. Yeah. It's one and a half percent. But still, that's one and a half percent off. That's a lot of money. It is a and lot then, of money. And then, so what Abate was saying was, well, Catino is saying something about the town sets an amount so tra taxes don't spike drastically. He right. said there are no cuts. Budgets going up five percent. School committee makes the decisions. There are differences and there are cuts. Yeah. There so has to specific be. I mean, ones, Abate yeah. said the increase means that um, it diminishes what schools have seen in the past, exactly what Kathy McLeod said, and you're adding the growth and it, and it feels like a cut because you, you, you're keeping level funding right. with increased student needs. Right. Um, Jean Birchman in this article said, I think teachers are giving voice to the reductions that are needed to hit the target set by the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. So Board of Selectmen setting a target right. without looking at how what, much what, how much what the needs how are the communities necessarily affected or how the so here are, are the affected. specific cuts that becky abate talked about technology integration teachers are going to be cut uh, so that's you know that's teaching teaching yeah. computer um literacy, literacy and, is really important yeah. librarians cut or positions reduced uh, middle school will face class sizes that are projected to be five per 25 percent larger than this year, 25% larger. Wow. Math classes at the middle school will likely grow in size. Te size. Teachers will have teaching caseloads that are almost 40% larger. That's that's unfair. I mean, so uh, yeah. increased budget is needed to meet expanding enrollment. That's just that's, that's not brain surgery. Is. Yeah. Um, and that's so, not fair to put on the teachers and the right, staff that manage right. the school. And then too. I know that um, I know and, and highly respect Kathy McLeod and the school committee yes. and their work and their efforts. They have had to make some really tough decisions because to. when you're given here's your amount of money, right. wh what can you let go of? Right. You look around for some of the extras. And there's um, not. Right. And, <laughs> and so, we're used to a lot. So of I asked perks. Jean directly. I wanted her to come in, but she's busy. And, yeah. and I asked a couple other people, but I asked her a couple things about. About, um, what was the enrollment you know five years ago three years ago and now oh, okay. so um, and what's coming so projected for this year 33,462 yep. we have welcomed 92 new students since September Wow that's almost a hundred yeah I... um, 2015 we had 
3,395. And 2012, we had 3,365. That's only 30 student difference in three years. Yeah. As opposed to 92 since this September. Right, right. Um, yeah. And that's really hard to absorb that. And it's to give the crazy. students the yep the nurturing or the teaching that we need to get right them. so here she's got here are the budget drivers because uh, i asked what's affecting the budget mm -hmm. so she said salary our salary is right. one million two hundred nine yep you know it's 2.8 uh let's see 2.8 increase um the expense for special ed they're looking for a two percent increase central office and the bus contract um 0.62 increase expense for buildings and grounds a 0.1 increase O occupational day expense 0.05 increase technology curriculum reg regular education 0.23 increase that's the 5.8 yeah so you can see where the increases are it's not a huge and increase considering what we're tackling with more students exactly i mean i think that that i mean if you think about your own budget right and you have to accommodate two more kids in your house mm -hmm. <laughs> for example everything every, yeah every, so i mean everything is gonna go up you right. know what i mean so and it, then here um so the increase well reducing the bus contract gives us 6.9 percent yeah increase um because we're paying for busing now right right so and they're they're or they'd like to cut the stipend, if you yeah. cut the positions in the technology department yeah seventy thousand five hundred dollar increase that we can save wow. and i know that matt cipriano yep. who has been a fabulous it guy just got a fabulous job in boston yeah so, so that's a natural attrition, attrition yeah. that he's not being let go right he found a better job but for the him. thing is is for i mean i work in cities and towns across the state IT is huge. I know. Because that's where all your information will, comes in, and that's where you grade the students. I mean, right. I don't need to tell you because you know it. Well, and it'll stretch It will stretch thin the people that are going to stay. Right. And then, 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 so anyway, elementary specialists are going to cut, and um, that's 36,754. 36, Does it, That may just be one position. Right. Right. Non-teaching support personnel, I don't know what that is, $75,000 yeah, yeah. $75, cut, so that could be three people. Right. Um, Long-term leave, they cut that, $96,000 yeah. increase to us. Central office support cut, 31000 that sounds like one position. Yep. Potential additional bus contract savings, 50000 that could be if we get That's the bus, we if we get the bus um, lot here, and oh. we get the excise tax paid to Hopkinton oh, they park here I didn't know they were doing that so yeah that's, that's a good. proposal gotcha. extraordinary maintenance cut 99,000 I'd like to know what that is right um supplies cut 2,200 total reductions um from the that the school committee voted would be 643,602 yep. so that's a 5.8 increase they they met right. the goal that Norman Kamala sent for them right um, that sounds other, like they're getting rid of some positions through attrition and yeah. then the law tell me what the long-term care do you, what's that $96,000 cut the long-term um, leave I'm just I don't know what it is long-term leave 96,161 is cut yeah, so that that would seem to me that a person a maternity had it, well I think it's FMLA Family Medical Leave Act ah, if a person is going to be out a certain extended yeah. amount of time there's they're protected um, and maybe a disability kind of situation gotcha. so so this must mean that that's getting they're going reduced. to adjust whoever that is or maybe it's more than one person right I don't know those particulars right. I would love That's to know them um, and the last thing I requested was current enrollment mm -hmm. including pre pre-k is 3585 right um, and but the projection was 3462 right so that's kind of interesting to me when you think of the numbers. You see how many new households have been added to Hopkinton. Yeah. So that right there gives you an increase in a tax base. Mm -hmm. So like how does that, why, I mean, because she was talking about almost a $500 to the medium household price right. increase in taxes a year. That's quite a bit. Yes. I mean, and for a lot of people that may not be feasible right so like how does that I'm curious on how that increase so maybe they have more children than what their tax base covers because when we were on when I was on the land use study committee each household 
for one child, 1.5 children was the average, right. was a dollar fifty six per dollar of income that right. they get. So yeah. with a child, so where we've gotten this increase in children from these new houses and the baby baby boomers phasing out and families like you know our neighborhood we see them moving in you know so i don't know that it's baby boomers phasing out yeah i think it's anybody seniors that don't 70 and older and 75 is not baby not boom. baby boomer that's yeah. not there yeah so so um that population uh, yeah. the older population i would say seniors um, senior seniors <laughs> yeah, Double seniors, yeah yeah and partly because of tax but also it's a different town now right and, and know? maybe that like what we were talking about too i mean we moved here to raise our children here, but maybe if, you know, I love Hockington, but maybe after my daughter's out of school and it gets too expensive, I'm like, well, maybe I'll buy a farm, you know, somewhere else. Well, and, that, know, and, and I that, think that's, that might be what, right. and I think that's the normal um, process. Course of action. But the problem with those people moving out, because they don't have a tax on the burden system, the people that are moving in that have kids, that increases the, I know. the load on on um, the tax burden for the schools in the community. Yeah, so. I have to say though, I remember Ben Paleko when he was on the Selectman saying that our, because we were talking about business tax income versus, um, you know, where was our tax income right. coming from? He, what I remember him saying is the most of our tax in, influx is from business. residential. Right. He said residential. Ah. So, so right. we still have because EMC. That's a big change with losing some right. Of that and Cal, we have a lot of uh, commercial. But so he was saying, you know, why are we increasing our commercial tax base when really we have more income because of the residential? residential. So I think the, the the school, you know, I think it's all going to figure itself out. Right. But it is a change, and and I was alarmed because it seems to be cutting some important right. positions. But maybe there was too much. Maybe there was kind of a balloon. In that we didn't need to have, right. so they're just you know being lean Adjusting. and adjusting. I mean, yeah, and more everybody efficient. does that with your own budget in your house or at work or right. or things like that. But yep. you know, if you, I, I mean, eHop is a great resource. I right. mean, I was poking around on there. They had each budget proposal, I should say, um, online that you can click on it and see the full PDF of it. So that if you're interested mm -hmm. in any specific budget, and it's also on the yeah, town website. It is right. They, that's where they get it. Right. So, all right, we have about one minute left. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, going forward, it'll be very interesting to see. People should show up to the Board of Selectmen yeah. meeting. Or watch because it anybody on, can on go. H -Cam. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, write to your Board of Selectmen yeah. person that you know. Um, send in letters to the editor. Yeah. So we all need to Educate participate yourself. in town government. Go to town meeting. Yeah. I and mean, vote. Make sure you vote. Make sure you register. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so we appreciate you joining us, and we will see you next, next time. Week. Have a good night.